really sad news here in the UK. Len Goodman, ballroom dancer, TV judge who made dancing accessible to millions, has died at the age of 78. He was a dancer and teacher until in his 60s. Strictly and Dancing with the Stars made him famous all over the world. Sarah Campbell looks back at his life. Let's hear from our head judge, Len Goodman. If you don't get four tens for that, I'm going to go home and pick on my walnuts. <laughs> He was Strictly's twinkly fountain of wit and wisdom. Yum, yum, pig's bum, that was fun. <laughs> you dance like I cook, just chuck it all in and hope for the best. <laughs> Honest, if he didn't like it. Your bum, it was like you were chewing a toffee. Seven, seven. Full of praise, if he did. It was knockout. Well done. From Len. In his youth, Len Goodman was a champion dancer himself quitting his job as a welder to turn professional. He quietly ran a dance school in Kent until he was 60. <laughs> then, to his surprise, the BBC called. Let's hear from our head judge, Len Goodman, um, one of the most respected ballroom and Latin judges in the country. In the cha, -cha, -cha I look for three things. Oh. Rhythm, rhythm, Rhythm. Why? 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 He did 14 seasons of Strictly. It was a hodgepodge of moves just out there to titillate the taste buds. I'm telling where's the chassis capes? Where's the twist what? turns? Where's the recognisable passadona? And crossed the Atlantic as head judge of America's Dancing with the Stars. I don't want to see flashing lights, crashing music. I don't want any skidding. <laughs> At an age when most are thinking of retirement, Love it. he found himself offered travel programs, Dave, you're getting a 10 from Len. documentaries. Looks all innocent now, <laughs> but once upon a time, dancing was a hotbed of hormones and romance. Ready, steady, let's go. Three, two, one, let's get on with the show. Even game shows. If you've got the time, let's go. He left Strictly in 2016, bathed in respect and affection. There you go. Your best dance. Yeah! Len Goodman, the East End boy, Artemis, like looking in a mirror. who became the star of Saturday Night. Let's speak now to Claudia Winkleman, who is co-host of Strictly Come Dancing. As I watch those pictures, Claudia, I'm thinking how many people will be so sad today, not only here in the UK, but in the US as well. So can I start by saying I'm, I'm sorry for your loss and I wonder what your thoughts are of Len today? Well, I do, thank you so much for allowing me on because all I really want to do is talk about him. And um, I used to do the sister show of Strictly, which was called It Takes Two, and Len would come on every week and try and teach me to dance, which, by the way, is impossible. And we would just cry with laughter and we chatted so much. He is was a class act. There was nobody like him because he was so humble. He loved dance. I mean, his face would light up when people, because lots of people take part in Strictly and they're like, you know what, I'll give it a couple of weeks, but I don't think it's going to be my thing. And then they fall in love with it and uh, he adored it. But he was uh, an extraordinary man, a brilliant man. One of my friends and colleagues, Carol, uh, who, as you know, does the weather, said about him today, and I thought it was a really lovely tribute, she said he was never in the business of humiliating people. He always no. just wanted to bring out the best in people. Absolutely. He was so passionate about dance that even if he would just explain, and it was the minutiae, because I still, I've been there for 900 years, I don't know what a heel lead is. And then he would go, but Claude, we're not just saying it, because actually if you stand like this, it makes your back like that. Um, and he was just, he used to come on uh, It Takes Two, as I said, every week, and we'd go, Len, can we get you a tea? And he'd be, don't be silly, I'll make the tea. He had no understanding of just how big he was, how much people loved him. In my own house, we still never use the word seven. We say seven differently. He changed a whole number for so many of us. Uh, no, he didn't want to humiliate anyone. He wanted to build them up.
Um, he loved proper dancing. I always felt bad for the props boys. They would almost hide from him. They'd carry like a gazebo or, you know, a papier mache Eiffel Tower. And he'd be like, where is that going? He just wanted people to dance, but he was adorable on camera, off camera, and to everybody who took part. You, you say you can't dance, Claudia, but what was it like when he would come and, and you know, put his arms around you and take you through a move? Someone so I'm, experienced doing that with you. Amazing, because he was such a gentleman, but he had such power. And literally, he would just click like that. He would click, and I really did not understand. But, you know, it was a privilege to work with him and a privilege to know him, and I send so much love to his family and friends. Was he surprised by the success of the programme initially? He was. I mean, if I can just bore you with a small story, but I think this absolutely encapsulates Len the man. Uh, we would chat a lot and he started doing the American show and I said to him, how is it? You know, are you tired? Blah, blah, blah. He said, no, I really enjoy it. He said, what's hard, though, is queuing for the rental car because... Um, and then I'd want to go and get my favourite cereal and I'd have to stop and do photos. And I always enjoy doing it. And by the way, just to uh, reiterate this at the moment, it was the biggest show in America. And I said, Len, I mean, it's lovely, but how, lo how long are you queuing? Like we all do for rental car. We'd be like, well, I never want to get to the front of the queue because then I feel bad I'm taking someone's place. And they're asking me about the scores I gave to somebody else. And... So, you know, I've probably been in the queue for about three hours. And then when I get to the supermarket to get to this cereal, that might take another couple of hours. I was like, Len, you know, you could, I mean, obviously nobody wants to make big demands, but you know, you could get a cab. Like they were, and he went, I don't want to be a bother. So he was this enormous star, but the most humble, the most gentle, never even wanted to, I would like make him, I'd say, do it in front of me. Just ask for a car, they'll pick you up. And, <laughs> If you tell them your favourite cereal, I promise you they'll get you a box. He was like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a pain. He was, there was nobody like him. It might not surprise you then, Claudia, that we've just, we've got a live page on the website up and running, just bringing in all the reaction. And we've just heard from Buckingham Palace, the Queen Consort has said Her Majesty is saddened to hear the news. I guess that's the other thing about him. He was loved by so many people from right across the spectrum of society. Absolutely, because we also felt, A, he has the expertise, but B, if you said, who would you like to go to the pub with? I think everybody would yeah. say, hey, I want to be with Len. I would like a hula hoop and a beer with Len Goodman more than anything else. So we all felt like, yeah, we knew him and he was wonderful to his fans, really, really wonderful. I would be there and people would go, Len, Len, Severn, could you sign this? Could you do a photo? And he was wonderful to everyone. Claudia, thank you for your lovely tribute to Len Goodman. Nice to talk to you. Bye. And as I said, the live page is up and running, just bringing our reaction. So many people with some really lovely tributes to Len Goodman, who has died at the age of 78.